Welcome to People and Profit, I'm Yuka Huayi. Coming up, from AI to green tech to mobility, VivaTech, Europe's largest trade show for innovation and startups, is back in Paris. What will the future of beauty look like? We'll take a deep dive into the latest trends in the growing and ever competitive cosmetic market. And is this the end of game shows as we know them? We'll take a look at what the cancellation of E3 tells us about the future of the multi-billion dollar industry. Global tech leaders and businesses have descended on the French capital for the seventh edition of VivaTech, Europe's largest trade fair for new technology. Emmanuel Macron touting his vision for digital sovereignty as artificial intelligence takes centre stage this year. Hundreds of other innovative solutions are on display, from climate to transport to energy and food. France 24's Brian Quinn has been finding out. Vivatech 2023, 2,500 startups and exhibitors from some 146 countries, 90,000 plus visitors expected. It's Europe's premier technology conference. One of the major themes here at Viva Tech is mobility, urban mobility, low carbon mobility, and one of the companies exploring the potential future of ground transportation is Turin-based Ital Design. This is the Climb E, a hybrid private and shared autonomous electric vehicle. The cabin is private and personalized. It sits atop a shared ground module called the Skid. Let's take it for a ride. The Climb B is a concept for the future modular and uh, multimodal mobility, matching a horizontal mobility made with a ground module, full electric autonomous driven, together with a vertical mobility using an elevator system that allows to bring the capsule, so the living module, up to your flat. One of the inventors keenest to revolutionize aviation, meanwhile, is Frankie Zapata, a French pilot who developed the water-powered flyboard and crossed the English Channel on his jet-powered flyboard air. His latest creation is the Zapata Air Scooter, a hybrid jet fuel and battery-powered multi-rotor helicopter that can fly 100 kilometers per hour at 4,000 meters altitude for two hours, all without the need for a pilot's license. The dream to fly. It's, uh, I have this dream since I'm a kid, since I'm born, and I spend uh, my entire life to transform the, all the complexity of aviation is something that is built for everybody. Everybody can become a pilot in 10 minutes. Climate and environmental issues never far from anyone's mind these days, and that's true here at VivaTech as well. From carbon capture technology, to new tech that uses the confluence of salt water and seawater to generate electricity, to this startup, which uses drones to drop seed pods to restore deforested jungle. Emmanuel Macron, of course, seeking to improve the business climate here in France and grow more startups. He's got his work cut out for him. Startup funding is down some 56% in the first quarter of this year. He'll be looking to turn that around with more funding from both the government and private investors here at Viva Tech 2023. After being hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic, the cosmetic industry has accelerated a paradigm shift towards digitalization and personalization. A recent industry report predicts the global beauty market to grow 6% on average every year to reach $580 billion by 2027. With augmented reality and artificial intelligence, the cosmetic shopping experience has become more and more personalised, while an increase in remote working has changed consumer behaviour as people are paying more attention to wellness and self-care. For more on the future of beauty tech, let's bring in Guy Belouge, Global Managing Director for Tech and Open Innovation at L'Oréal. He joins us from VivaTech, where global cosmetic companies are showcasing their latest ideas, from a handheld device that can diagnose your skin to a computerized makeup applicator designed to help people with reduced mobility. Guy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Now, science and technology have always been an integral part of the cosmetic industry, and digital innovations such as virtual try-ons have also been around for some time now. So what exactly is beauty tech today in 2023? 
Well, you know, I've been doing this job for now 12 years when it comes to technology and beauty. And this year, we've come to Viva Tech with really our vision of the last 10 years of working on how technology, beauty, and science will intersect each other. In the end of the day, for us, the most important thing is beauty, bringing beauty for each individual. So we call that beauty for each, and also using technology to allow us to reach our commitments with beauty for all. So at today's Viva Tech, we have all kinds of innovations that are really about services that will augment the beauty results, allow people to achieve um, the kinds of beauty that you could never do with your hands alone. And these are the ways that we're bringing together digital and physical technology to create the beauty that moves the world. All these innovations, are they ready for the mass market or are they just very expensive gadgets? Well, we have some projects today that we're showing that are at the mass market. For example, we've unveiled a Microsoft Teams uh, collaboration with augmented reality on our Modiface tech, which will be in hundreds of millions of people's hands. We have shade finders that are on our brand websites that allow you to get your shade that are in millions of people's of hands. And then we have some projects like um, the Hapta project, which is for one in 10 people in the world today that don't have the ability to experience beauty because of their mobility or hand issues or limitations. And this is the project we have with Lancome. Our biggest purpose is to try to solve the consumer needs and use technology to elevate the experience. And so for this, we have projects going into all kinds of places, all ge geographies around the world. And is the advance of artificial intelligence a game changer for the beauty industry? I think with AI, we're going to see a lot. I mean, today, when you look at our stand, we have half of what we're showing at VivaTech this year that has AI embedded into it. It allows us to be uh, more precise when we have our devices that can do magical things, like our magic brow with Shuamura that allows you to print hundreds of little um, hair-like structures and shape your brow in a second. All of that is powered by data and learning that comes from AI. But in the end, it's multiple technologies that go into solving the challenges that we have. What matters the most is the ability to use tech to be able to solve some of those needs that have been around forever. Like 9 out of 10 women can't get the perfect brow shape or 50% of people can't get the right shade of foundation. All of these are things that we're using technology to solve and AI plays a big role in that. So uh, responding to consumer needs, but also consumer behavior has also changed quite uh, a lot these past two years. Many people, for instance, uh, need, uh, feel less need to put makeup on because of remote working, uh, while becoming more conscious about what uh, they put on their skin. So how, how are companies adapting to these uh, changes? Well, I think you're absolutely right when it comes to the demandingness of our consumer today. I mean, the beauty industry has an exciting consumer. It's a consumer that's always wanting innovation, always wanting to experience new beauty. And for that reason, we see lots of shifts. We see shifts where people want to know more information about their skin, their hair. And so this is why we're building new diagnostics with startups and also internally to help us to give them that information from your smartphone or also from little handheld devices like our MetaProfile all the way to being able to create that bespoke um, product for people. Um, and in the end, as the consumer expectation shifts, technology also allows us more connection with them to be able to understand those shifts in real time and to be able to provide services that will give them the information that they want to be able to achieve whatever their beauty desires or dreams are. So we are in a world today that's rapidly moving, but we are using technology and our understanding of beauty and science to meet that demand. Now, today the trendsetters are the Gen Z, they're very powerful influencers. How are marketers trying to reach out to them? I think today, you know, we have fantastic brands in L'Oreal that are, are really understanding all the consumers around the world, all people around the world, and the shifts in society. What I can tell you is on a technology point of view, more and more, as we see that we are moving towards these really exciting times of, of, um, of consumers um, around the world and people around the world, we're able to provide them diagnostics and services that will be able to give them their individual information. For example, our newest collaboration with Clue, that lets us understand based on hormones and the um, cycle of people, how that will affect their skincare products. All of these are going to the science, going to the biology, will allow us to be able to reach every individual in this very rapidly changing world. 
Ogdi Balouz from Lorient, thank you very much for speaking to us uh, for People in Profit. Now, this week would have marked a post-pandemic return in person of the Electronic Entertainment Expo, or E3. But the world-famous game show was cancelled after major developers and publishers pulled out. Analysts and fans say it may never come back, as the gaming industry has shifted its focus from traditional trade shows to virtual events and individual marketing strategies. Shelley Sitbon has this. LA's E3 was the world's biggest gaming event until COVID came along. In 2021, there was one show online, and that was it. E3 was one of the best launching spots for new games and sometimes also for new platforms. It's gone off and on, and right now it's teetering in the off category because of lack of interest and financial commitment from some of the major publishers in the game uh, development space. COVID may not be the only reason for E3's decline. Sony's PlayStation had already stopped attending before the pandemic. Nintendo and Microsoft's Xbox pulled out of this year's event, prompting the cancellation. Publishers have changed their sales strategies. Life will find a way, as they say. Like We you know, work with Microsoft for their show and we have our own show. And so there's things that... There are other ways to get that message out. Will there be an E3 show next year? No one knows, starting with the organizers, but some are keeping the faith. There's a lot more out there that the games industry uh, with a big G is touching. Um, and it involves everything from the future of how we go through our cars to the future of how we go to the movies. There's a chance for a roaring comeback, but it, uh, it's up to the industry to make it happen. Players are not turning away from gaming. COVID lockdowns led to a 25% increase of the market. And after a slim contraction, global gaming revenues are expected to hit the 180 billion euro mark this year. That's a wrap for this week. Don't forget, you can catch up with this and all our previous episodes on the France 24 website. If you have any questions or comments, you can also reach out to us on our social media accounts. Until next time, goodbye. Want to know? Find out here. With France 24, learn to tell what's true from what's fake on social networks. Identify the false rumors in European news stories. Get reliable information about migration. Truth or fake, every day we bring you information that is verified and put into context. France 24 is news you can rely on every day across all platforms.